There is a place on Earth untouched by human hands, where a jungle supports more forms of life than anywhere on our planet. Hidden for countless years in the far reaches of the upper Amazon, the place is an Eden called Manu. As the Manu River winds through the jungle, it carves out cliffs, exposing rich clay. Nearly every morning, great flocks of macaws and parrots arrive for an unlikely meal. Macaws and parrots spend much of their day feeding on unripe seeds containing poisons. Above the forest floor, another creature has become specialized for a different kind of habitat. Weighing barely 13 pounds, the tree sloth spends nearly its entire life in the rainforest canopy. This young mother carries her fragile month-old baby on her stomach. Sloths feed on the leaves of nearly 100 species of trees. Because leaves provide little energy, the sloth has evolved to move slowly and will spend days feeding in a single tree. The baby will nurse for another month, and the mother will tend to it for half a year. The youngster has only that short time to learn to survive on its own. For the moment, though, there's no need to rush. For some of Manu's inhabitants, the cooling, life-giving river presents a dangerous barrier. Giant otters spend much of their time grooming one another. It is thought that grooming reinforces the bonds between family members. For even though otters exist at the top of the lake's food pyramid, they do have potential predators. By living in packs, they lower the risk of predation. Manu, the ancient rhythms of predator and prey remain unchanged. Peccaries, relatives of the pig, are a tempting quarry for the jaguar. The wet season's bounty of plants and roots is quickly abandoned at the hint of danger. These two are dangerous, and the big cat knows this. 
With two-inch tusks, they'll viciously attack a predator if one of the herd is wounded. preferring fruits, even a troop of spider monkeys is attracted. Food sources elsewhere are drying up. At six weeks old, the baby is already comfortable living a hundred feet off the ground. Bright flowers have evolved to be noticed, but give nothing away for free. Their strategy is to attract an animal, then dust its face with pollen. A yellow tufted woodpecker shares the harpy's tree. Too small to serve as prey, it's merely a curiosity for the male harpy. Yeah. Nearby, a fig tree attracts the attention of scarlet macaws. Big trees fruit unpredictably, and when they do, they provide a feast for a wide variety of rainforest animals. After five months in the nest, the harpy chick is transformed. It will still be a month before the chick can attempt to fly. Now he spends each day branch walking, flapping his wings, exercising his muscles, practicing his balance. All his preparation for the day when he will finally soar through the forest. For the moment though, the chick is content to observe his expanding world.
Nearby, a fruiting copaiba tree draws other residents of the canopy. The seeds are favorites of spider monkeys and their hungry rivals, the toucans. Another month passes, and as the clouds and river weave their ancient paths, the critical time for the harpy chick has arrived. Instinct now urges him to take to the air. So it continues, as it has for millions of years, the endless cycle of the seasons. It is a world that exists beyond the depths of human memory, one that even now we scarcely comprehend. And with luck, it is a world that will continue to exist for a million years more, in an Eden called Manu. <laughs>